Today I want to share with you a very positive story. And an amazing word that came to me afterwards that was inspired by having a brand new grandchild. Hashem, next video, we'll talk about how we can find that in davening and how we can use that positive emotion to inspire our davening to greater heights. And here's the story. About three years ago, just about exactly three years ago, because in Hashem, this upcoming week, we'll be celebrating the upsharing of my first grandchild. But three years ago, we were living in Eretz Israel, and I was commuting to Milwaukee and working in Milwaukee. I would stay there between six to eight weeks and then come home again. It was coming up to Hanukkah, and I very much was looking forward to coming home and spending Hanukkah with my family. Shlomo called me up, and he, and he asked me, maybe I could try and come home earlier. Not wait all the way to Hanukkah a couple weeks earlier, because in Mitzvah there will be a Simcha, and in Mitzvah if it would be a boy, then he would want me to be by the bris. Obviously, that was very important to all of us, but after talking about it and deliberating, we decided that it's very important for me to be on for Shabbos Hanukkah and not to have to come, try and come earlier and then we have to be in Milwaukee for Hanukkah and miss Hanukkah with the family. And we would have to chalk it up to the sacrifices that we have to make as part of that decision of living the way we were. As Hashem would have it, so apparel, my daughter-in-law was late, and as I left America, a father, I landed in Eretz Israel, a grandfather, Mazel Tov, a baby boy was born. And that Friday night, we were able to be in the hospital with Shalom and Sarperel and celebrate the Shalom Zacher. And I was able to be there for the bris as well, all within the tickets that I had already bought months before without having to change anything. Unbelievable, Hashgach HaPratis, the way Hashem runs the world and works out, even though we tend to have many other thoughts. Holding a grandchild is an experience that really fails to be put into words. May you all be zoichet to have that experience if you've not yet had already. Many, many, many more times. In an attempt to try and express those feelings, I thought of the following vote. The Gemara in Kedushan says, Anyone who teaches a grandchild Torah as if they received Torah in our Sinai. I was bothered by that Gemara. Why is it Hamalamid Ben Benoy? If it is a concept of transmission, of giving over Torah from one generation to the next, as if we are continuing the, the giving of Torah from Har Sinai, so that it could be even Benoy. Why Dafka Ben Benoy? Another question I had is that why is it if it's if it call him Malamid, if you teach your child, your grandchild Torah, as if you're a Mekabal Torah, as if you receive Torah on Sinai, it should be giving. It should be if I teach, which is an act of giving, if I give to my grandchild Torah, I should be understand what the giving of Torah was like. Why is it that if I teach a grandchild, it's as if I received the Torah and I see it? So what's the stereotypical difference between a parent and a grandparent? A parent is charged with teaching a child, raising a child, teaching them right and wrong, good and bad, having them learn responsibilities, but a grandparent, a grandparent is there just to, to love. A grandparent just gives unconditional love to a child and leaves the discipline to the parents. Like my in-laws used to joke, right? You can hold the grandchild and then when the child needs to be changed, that's the time to call the parents. So a grandparent is able to give a certain level of love, a certain type of love that is, is without Din, only, only chesed, only avo, without any type of judgment attached to it. Parenthetically, when we were teaching growth mindset in school, they talked about having someone who believed in you, having someone who could encourage you there, that empowered people to grow and to try and never to give up. Many, many times people would relate how they had a grandparent that believed in them, and was the one that was their figure that always encouraged them. Interestingly, it was usually a grandmother and not a grandfather. I wonder what that says. And it occurred to me that that is the pshat in this Gemara. When Hashem gave Torah, of course there was din v'cheshmet. Of course there were chukimim ishpatim. And of course there were anshim. But Hashem's midas of ava, Hashem's midas of chesed is not limited to that of a parent. 
it is unlimited, it's unconditional, and wants us to try, no matter how many times we do Averis and how many times we fail, Hashem always wants us just to come closer and try again. And that Ava is much more comparable to the Ava of a grandparent. Now as human beings, Chazal tell us that we learn to relate to Hashem the same way that we learn to relate to our parents, to our authority figures. And as a child growing up, we see a parent and we understand there's also Ava, but there's also accountability. There's also Din V'cheshben. And therefore, we associate that with Hashem. That when Hashem gave us the Torah, it must have been with Ava, of course, but also Din V'cheshben. But when a person becomes a grandparent, and a person is teaching a grandchild to you, and you feel that love for the grandchild, you only want that child to do well, and you don't care how many times they mess up, you just want what's best for them, you just want to give them, you just want to be able to share with them, we can now understand that's the Ava that Hashem had when He gave to you. It was an Ava of a grandparent. Yes, there's Din V'cheshben, yes, Chukim Nishpatim, but the Ava that was there was an unconditional Ava, that was unlimited and that's what Hashem wanted and that's what Hashem experienced or we experienced at that time. So therefore, we now understand what Kabbalah said to what was the Ava that we were receiving when we were Mechabal to Hashem, next time we'll talk about where we find that in Davening and how Davening can use that, in Davening we can use that emotion to help us connect to Hashem in ways that we could not before.